Next guest, uh, who we have for a few minutes, uh, Senator Jim DeMint, the uh, former senator from South Carolina, who has a very busy schedule, and we appreciate him joining us to discuss his new book, Falling in Love with America Again. Senator DeMint, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. Well, Tim, it's good to be back with you. Thanks for having me. Uh, this, yeah, this is, uh, I know I sound just like Tim. This is uh, Ed Vitagliano. Tim is out. Uh, oh, okay. Join- they told me I was going to be on. With- I'm sorry. Hey, it's uh, it's, it's okay. It's a, you too. <laughs> it's it's a you paid me a you paid me a great compliment, sir. Thank you so much. Um, so, falling in love with America again. Uh, this seems like a book that is about as timely as you can get because everything that uh, we see in the news, everything we hear about, is a country. Uh, being pulled apart, a country that doesn't have a future. This is not going to be the American century. But you believe there is a way to bring America back to its halcyon days. Well, the, the book is all about how blessed we are to be Americans, and that's the first thing we have to remember as we we look at our challenges ahead. And But many people think we're on the wrong road, and about 80% of young Americans don't think the American dream is attainable anymore. So we, we have to accept that we're moving in, the, in a, the wrong direction. But fall in love with America again is, reminds us why we were great in the first place, um, of the just the fact that America was built from the ground up while all other nations in the world today are you know, top-down controlled and central solutions. And so... And, and we use a quote a lot in the book from Edmund Burke, and he reminds us that the little platoons in our lives, our families, um, our church groups of small businesses we work for, the shops that we do business with, I mean, that's where we develop the public affection uh, and our love for fellow man. And that's desperately needed today when we, we're so divided as a nation because of political polarization. Um, Americans are actually united around the core concepts that make us great. So uh, the book is just reminding people that we're, if we want to really love each other and, and take this diversity and make it into one um, melting pot, we have to remember that that comes from the freedom of association and, and people being able to live out their own values and beliefs. And but what's happening now, as you know, is more and more central control is is putting out one-size-fits-all solutions for education, for health care, uh, for many economic functions such as energy development, and it's really dividing people, and there's a lot of resentment and anger, and the only way to turn that around is to push power out of Washington back where it belongs. Uh, Senator DeMint, Ray Pritchard here. Uh, yeah, i got to say, I love the title of your book. It's, it's appealing at a very deep level, falling in love with America again, and you've already pointed out that we're an extremely polarized society, and uh, some of that even seems to be intentional. Maybe some people enjoy dividing Americans into different groups. Uh, if we're going to see a rebirth of true patriotism in the best sense here in America in our day, what sort of things have to happen, and what what do we need to do, not just in Washington, but out here in 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 big middle America, down at the grassroots, to uh, to, to have that kind of love for our country be reborn in our own generation? It, it goes back to remembering what makes America work in the first place. And, and while I do know that politics is very divisive and, and polarized right now, Americans are much more united. And the key here is that if you and I differ on, on, on things, on morality, on uh, you know, the role of government in whatever, uh, we can get along, uh, even though we may be different on a lot of things, if we're not forced to accept each other's lifestyle or point of view. Uh, but what's happening now is when one person uses the coercion of government to force uh, you know, his or her views on someone else, it creates division and resentment. And so the first thing we need to do as Americans is realize the battle now is not between Republicans and Democrats or the left and the right. It's between we the people and big government. Big government is what's focusing or, or actually pushing our resources 
towards that top 1%. That's why we've got an income gap, because the bigger government gets, the more it fosters big corporations, big banks, big unions, big lobby groups. Uh, and this is not what makes America work. Yet people in Washington seem to have convinced a lot of Americans that they can help the poor, that they'll build a middle class, that they'll create fairness between the top 1% and the rest of us. The fact is, and I saw it year after year when I was in the House and the Senate, that when you know, big government grows, uh, it's at the expense of the little guy. And when the doors close and legislation is written, usually the big corporations, the big unions, are writing that legislation. We saw that with the bailouts. I mean, the big banks had a big hand in causing our recession, causing many small businesses to go out of business. Uh, yet it was the big banks that were bailed out, and the Dodd-Frank legislation advantaged them for years to come. Senator Dementon, and I know you let us know when you've got to go. I know you've, uh, you're have you in between two commitments, and we appreciate you being able to, uh, to uh, give us some time here. So let us know when you've got to go. Um, I do have a, 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 at least one more question. Um, uh, focused foreign policy is a part of uh, your strategy to get America, you know, to a place of stability and prosperity uh, as leader of the free world. Now, this is, this is a kind of a rhetorical question, but some people may be thinking, well, foreign policy, look, just get us out of the world. I'm tired of being in, entangled in all these troubles. We got Syria, Crimea, you know, still Afghanistan, Iraq. Why is a focused foreign policy so important for uh, America? Well, at Heritage, we talk about the importance of strength and focus. Um, we've, we've got to have the strength and the commitment and the clarity in our foreign policy so other countries know that when we say something, we mean it. And that has a stabilizing force all around the world. But the last year since I've been at Heritage, many foreign leaders have come through and privately told us that the perception of American weakness and the perception that we are not committed or unclear as to what it is that what role we want to play in the world, it has created instability throughout the Middle East. We're now seeing it in Russia. Uh, it's very much an issue in Central and South America. We don't talk about that, but that is probably a bigger problem than almost any other area of the world. So it's important that America be st strong militarily and that we perceive we are perceived to be committed to a focused foreign policy. Now, I don't think Americans want our country meddling and intervening all over the world. Uh, but the fact is, when we're not perceived as being strong and committed, we cause uh, situations around the world that will force us to be um, intervening and, and involved where we don't want to be. And I think we see that in Ukraine now. Uh, but Ukraine has been free of Russia for you know well over a decade, and we've had every opportunity to support them in the building of their economic system and the um, political system. But Russia's been meddling and undermining, and we have not been there enough to support the ideas that we believe in. And what that ha that's resulted in, basically, Ukrainians, at least one part of their country, turning back to the fold of Russia. Our guest has been uh, Senator Jim DeMint of South Carolina. He has written a new book called Falling in Love with America Again, forward by Dr. Ben Carson, a rising star uh, for many uh, conservatives in this country. Jim DeMint is president of the Heritage Foundation, and we're uh, very supportive of the work that they do. Uh, Senator DeMint, thank you so much for uh, uh, we knew we kind of grabbed you in between commitments, and we appreciate you uh, being on the program, and best uh, with your new book. Uh, where can folks get this, by the way? Well, they can get it at um, any bookstore, or they can get it online at um, Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Uh, I think it's at Sam's Club. And so it, it seems to have pretty good distribution around the country, and I, I do hope folks will uh, take some time to, to read it and remind ourselves how blessed we are and what we need to do to regain the America we love. Uh, thank you, Senator, for uh, being on the program with us. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Senator Jim DeMint.